Breaking news, sources telling CNN tonight that during the high school mass shooting, three Broward County deputies had not entered the building. Instead, they appeared to stay outside. This is after we learned that the deputy assigned to protect the school campus, he didn't go inside either. And tonight we're hearing from one of the students who was shot during that attack and spoke to President Trump while still in the hospital. Samantha Fuentes is out front. She is a senior at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Samantha, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, thank you for having me. Samantha, listen, I, I know you lost good friends in the shooting, and of course you paid, you're paying a price. You, you got sh shot in one leg, shrapnel in another, another leg, and I'm sure the viewers tonight, as they look at you there, their, their heart goes out to you. The, the first question is just how are you doing in, in the days since this attack? You know, just taking it one day at a time. I can't say that I'm not exhausted, but yeah. I have all the support in the world by everyone that I love right now. Well, keep them close to you. Uh, it, so you had just gone through this. You're, you're sitting in your hospital bed. You receive a call from President Trump. Tell us how that conversation went. It went quite interesting. Um, one of the first things he said to me was that he heard that I was a big fan of his and that he was a big fan of mine. And he was just trying to um, console me and let me know that everything was going to be OK. Um, he then commenced to call those the shooter a sick puppy and uh, probably used the word oh boy probably a solid eight times um i can't say that, that i was consoled or helped <laughs> you didn't feel well what what do, do you have any idea what gave him the impression that that you were a big fan of his as as he said to you uh, i'm not quite sure it's not like we've had any prior engagements to that phone call, so maybe it was just an assumption. I, you know, it was, it, it was interesting, and, and I know you, you expressed some surprise that he brought up the shooter in the conversation in, in light of what you went through. How did that part of the conversation go? Um, I don't think he's ever had to have that conversation with someone before, and it was definitely clear in that moment because he didn't express any real empathy, but mm. it's kind of hard to express empathy when you don't understand. I get that. I mean, it's, it's I imagine, listen, it's, it's of course a difficult phone call, most of all for you, right, in light of what, you, what you've been through. You, you told one of my colleagues before this interview that you've never been so unimpressed by a person in, in your life. I don't want to put you in an uncomfortable position, but what, what were your emotions as you said that and experienced that? It's just that when you go through a very traumatic experience such as this one, you have to be very delicate in the way that you phrase your words to people. And I don't feel that he took any caution or any uh, regard for what I was going through. And that kind of hurt my feelings. But yeah. I can't say that I don't respect him and I can't say that I don't respect him as a president, though I do appreciate the concern. <laughs> Of course, I understand, and, and you're, you're very respectful. I, I've, I've noticed this as I've talked to other of your classmates as well. You're young, you've been through something horrible that none of us, most of us never have, and, but you're handling this with, with great poise and maturity, and I, I want to make sure you're, you're aware of that. Uh, I, I want to ask you if I can a bit about uh, the, the school response to this shooting. We're learning more about the school research resource, rather, Officer Scott Peterson, knowing he waited outside the building. And listen, I'm, I'm always reluctant to place too much blame on any one individual. I mean, there, there's fear, there, there's the fear in, in the moment. Um, I want to play, though, what Peterson said at a 2015 school board meeting uh, about his job. Have a listen. I'm almost on my way out. I'm, I'm 30 years, so, but, I, you know, there, I have other police officers that, you know, they've made homes there. They, you know, they're part of that community. We're, we're all here for the same goal, to protect our kids, to protect our property. You had interactions with him. You saw him at work, you know, before this all happened. Do you think too much pressure or responsibility is, is, is put on folks like this in a situation like this? Absolutely not. Um, mm -hmm. when, you, when you become a police officer, you take an oath to protect and serve. And I don't feel that Peterson protect and served his children just as he claimed he would. He broke a promise, and that's obvious in his inaction. Understood. Do, do you feel, because we've been learning about uh, just other missed signals here, right, that there were warnings about Nicholas Cruz before this. Do you feel let down by not just the school resource officer and the police, but, but the other authorities involved here, the FBI, the school district? Absolutely. 
I can't say that I, I'm not disappointed, um, and I'm not surprised either. Goodness, well, why aren't you surprised? Well, I mean, everyone in our school, including parents and teachers and faculty and students, everyone has reported this kid. And we thought mm -hmm. that we did everything in our power to get him off of school grounds, get him away from us, because he was a violent and malicious person. And that was obvious. And kids would even joke about how he was going to be the next school shooter. And as students, we can only do so much. We thought that if we put it into the hands of the law, in the hands of our government that it would be handled. But unfortunately, as students, now we have to take action because our government is failing us, our system is failing us, and we won't be stopped. You're saying that, that other students used to joke about him becoming a school shooter? Absolutely, because of how violent he was and how erratic he was. Goodness, well, you, you did do all you could do, and I, and I think you should be conscious of that. You're, you're definitely, you and your classmates, stepping up now. Uh, I, classes, I know, are meant to resume next week, next Wednesday, I believe, at, the high, at your high school. Uh, you're still going through a lot. Are, are you planning to go back? Um, no, I don't intend on going back, but that has little to nothing to do with my fear of returning to the campus. Um, this is because I want to take this opportunity to advocate for my cause and recover. I want to take as much time as possible to spread my message and doing so I'll be taking myself out of school, just finishing it online and getting it out as getting out as soon as possible. Samantha, you, you and your classmates, they, they've captured the attention of a nation and, and you should be very proud of that. I just want to say I really do wish you the best and I wish you a swift recovery. I know you got a lot still to go through. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Take care of yourself.